That's a very good question, my dear brothers and sisters. In Arabic, we have a word for this. Detoxifying the soul, cleansing the soul has a word. What do we call it? Tazkiyatun nafs or tathirun nafs. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. The Quran says only one is successful. Who's the one who achieves success? The one who does the tazkiyah of the nafs. The one who detoxifies the nafs. The one who purifies the nafs. How do you do that? I'll share with you a few points here, my dear brothers and sisters. Remember that whenever we commit a sin, spiritually, we generate a black, ugly, polluted effect on the soul. We pollute the soul. Now when something is polluted, when something is dirty and you want to clean it, how do you clean it? It depends on the type of uncleanliness. If it's something light, you just put it under the water and it washes it. Some of the sins, all you need is the water of istighfar and tawbah, reading Quran, doing good deeds, it washes them. Inna al-hasanat, yudhibna sayyat. Just like water washes uncleanliness, the hasanat that you do will wash you from your sins. It does tazkiyah. But sometimes, and the sisters who work in the kitchen know very well, it's a little bit stickier. Uh, when it's stickier, what do you need to do? You need some scrubbing. Ahsan. Jallafa, scrubbing. You need a jallafa. This soul that commits sins, sometimes that water running through it is not enough. You need to scrub it. How? How do you scrub it? <laughs> yes, the spiritual leaf. I'll, I'll share with you ways on how to scrub the soul or the nafs. The first step to scrubbing is to feel sadness and regret. Whenever you feel regret about a sin, you really feel bad about it, you're scrubbing it. You're scrubbing it. It's a little bit painful to be in that state where you're regretting something. It's not an easy state to be in. But the hadith says the true mu'min, when they do bad, they feel bad about it. Nafs al lawama. And God forbid, if one day the human beings find himself committing sins and not feeling bad, that means Allah has taken the tawfiq from them. And the hadith says they might even be, you know, blocked from getting shafa'ah. Yes. Man lam tasu'hu sayyatuh. The hadith from the imam says, لا ينالو shafa'ah. Because this shows this person has no care for Allah. No care. Because if I did something bad and I violated the law of God, at least I should feel bad. At least. That's the, that's the starting point. If I don't feel regret, that means there is no toba really. I'm okay with what I did. The first layer of scrubbing, my dear brothers and sisters, is to do what? Feel bad about it. Have that huzn. Have that sorrowfulness and sadness, not despair. Don't mix up losing hope in Allah's mercy with sadness. You have full hope, but you feel bad about it. The stronger your remorse is and the stronger the regret, the more your tawbah is accepted. Basically the fact that you feel regret, that in itself shows you're true, you're honest. In kana nadamu ala dhanbi tawbatun, fa'ana awwalun nadimeen, or fa'inni awwalun nadimeen. Or فَإِنَّنِي مِنَ النَّادِمِ شَافُعُ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِقْرَارُهُ وَتَوْبَتُهُ اَعْتِذَارُهُ Ahsan. See, it starts with that feeling of remorse. That's the first layer of scrubbing. Let's go to deeper layers. What if the stain on the plates has been there for a few days? See? The more the sin stays with you, the harder it is to scrub it. That's why the hadith says, if within seven hours you repent, the sayyah doesn't even get recorded. Allah tells the angels, when my believer, when my servant said, does a good deed, immediately write it. But when he does a bad deed, give him seven hours. If he does istighfar or tawbah, don't even write it. Have you seen the plates when you eat them? If right after you eat them, you put them under the water, most of the stains go. But if it stays an hour, what happens? If it, if it stays a day, what happens? If it stays three days, see the longer the stain stays, 
on the plate, the more difficult it is to scrub it. And the longer you wait to do tawbah, the more scrubbing you have to do. Subhanallah. Keep that in mind. That's why it's recommended to quickly do tawbah. Quickly. When you do a sin, quickly do tawbah. It's easy to scrub it and regain the purity of your soul. So let's go to the second layer of scrubbing. When something is very tough, you need to do more scrubbing. You need to put a, you know, a, de a detox on it, put a detergent on it. The Imam السلام, mentions this, subhanAllah. All of this is mentioned in the hadith of Ahlul Bayt. The Imam السلام, says one layer of scrubbing and doing tawbah, and to dhiqa jismaka alama ta'a kama adhaqtahu halawat al -masiyah. The Imam السلام, says, I'll take you to a second layer of detoxing, of scrubbing. Just like you allowed your body to enjoy the momentary pleasure of sin, let your body taste the pain of obedience. That's how you compensate. I use these eyes doing haram. And maybe I found pleasure in it. How do I purify the eye? It's not just enough to say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, and that's it. No. The Imam says, you used your eyes an hour to do something haram. Use these eyes an hour in Allah's ta'a. Look at your parents with mercy and rahmah. That's ta'a. It washes the sin. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, don't think this is silly. Sit in front of your mom and dad and just look at them with rahmah. The angels will descend upon you. Yes, because when you look at your parents with love, with rahmah, Allah opens paths in your hearts. Go read the Qur'an for an hour in the middle of the night. You're tired, you don't feel like it. But that's how you purify the eye. One hour of reading ilm and knowledge, that's how you purify the eye. Same with the ear, same with the hands, same with the tongue. Anytime you used any of these senses and body limbs to do something haram, compensate by using them in ta'atullahi azza wa jal. See, now you're doing more scrubbing. Now you're doing more scrubbing. And then there are other, you know, layers we can discuss. Now when we think of tazkiyat al nafs, there are, you know, physical techniques sometimes that we do. Physical exercises, certain a'mal, um, even the food, even the food that you eat. If you want to empower your body, limit the, 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 the intake of food that you eat. It does wonders in Tazkiyat al nafs my dear brothers and sisters. It does wonders. The more food we eat, the more we make the soul heavy. The more we burden the soul. But one hadith in Nahj al from Imam Ali السلام, gives us the secret to be angelic in our purity. The Imam Ali السلام, says, مَلْ مُجَاهِدُ الشَّهِيد فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَعْظَمَ أَجْرًا مِمَّنْ قَدَرَ فَعَفَّ كَادَ الْعَفِيفِ أَنْ يَكُونَ مَلَكًا مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The Imam السلام, says, don't think that the mujahid, the one who fights in the battle, has a reward more than the afif, the one who has chastity, when he can do wrong. The one who's chaste can be an angel. What does عَفَّ mean? Iffa is when I can do haram, I can, it's easily accessible, I say no. That's Iffa. The Imam says if you do this a few times, it's easily accessible, and you, you say no, Allah creates this purity in your heart. Allah creates this light in your heart. Keep that in mind. That in itself, my dear brothers and sisters, goes a long way in purifying the soul. Oh, <laughs>